So this is something I made. This is actually one of the first open source uh, designs I ever made on a 3D printer. And uh, when I built my own 3D printer with my friend Michael, I um, actually decided to design this open source um, iPhone tripod. It's kind of hard to open with one hand. And uh, if it's an iPhone 6 Plus, I can't even remember how it works, but um, I just wanted something that was rigid and was fairly compact and folded up nicely, and um, and it actually works really well. It's highly functional, and uh, it's actually a lot better than a lot of uh, little iPhone tripods I've, I've bought. And uh, so I shared the designs. I think I made them in, I think I made it in SolidWorks. Um, I actually can't remember what program I used. I can't remember if I was doing it in SolidWorks or something else. But it was really cool because once I actually put it out there in the community, I found that, um, you know, it was just sweet to be able to say, here, I have a copy of this, this solution for something. And um, it's kind of why I'm really excited. I'm just going to try this out right now, actually. And then I'll... So here it is. It's working. So that's kind of why I'm really excited to uh, work on sort of the beginnings of an open source um, cloud rendering pipe. And the reason why I'm doing it is because because I'm an effects artist. Um, I actually don't like any of the cloud solutions that are out there right now. They don't quite do exactly what I need them to. Um, so I kind of figure if I produce something that solves my needs, why don't I just share it. I'd love to actually just make it open source and allow other people to have a copy of my company. Um, and, you know, I don't know if it's going to work. I just figure I should just give it a shot. Um, because if I can find a thousand people that like what I'm producing, um, it wouldn't take much for me to be able to um, sustain myself and actually share what's share what I'm making and share what I'm solving in the process. Um, so I'd love to know if, you know, that's something that you guys think it'd be awesome to contribute to. Um, you know, I, I could imagine that only something like uh, 30 cents a day um, from a person, if I could get to a thousand people, um, that'd, that'd really uh, be enough. And, um, to go into some of the deets of what I've been able to build so far, uh, it's been pretty cool. I've been spending about the last nine months uh, learning how to build infrastructure in the cloud. And I went through a lot of pain early on. It's really hard. Things are getting a lot easier now. I feel like I've passed a, a big hump in uh, learning the right technology, the right tools to do the job. And... Um, and also just identity, just being able to go from idea to solution a lot more rapidly now. So what happens is I've got this template that I've built in Terraform and I have a little server inside a virtual machine and that, that server, which is uh, running Ubuntu, Ubuntu uh, just needs about two to four cores and that has my license servers, it has my uh, render management database, um, and this template will spin up my resources in the cloud dynamically. So when I press go, it's gonna create a virtual NAS appliance in Sydney, which is a couple of thousand Ks away. Um, it spins up an OpenVPN instance and it automatically connects my machine at home, which is sitting over there in that corner. It automatically connects my machine at home uh, over OpenVPN to my private infrastructure in Sydney. Uh, so there's the only traffic that's going over the public internet is a, an encrypted tunnel from OpenVPN. So pretty high security. Um, I don't have to worry about uh, encrypted traffic for every single uh, machine uh, because it's all going through just that one encrypted tunnel. Uh, and then it appears as if I'm on the same network. So I can actually mount that virtual NAS appliance 
as a file system. So I can actually just get that data straight away. Um, that is one of the huge, huge reasons why I got into this in the first place is that I wanted to have, I didn't want to have to use Dropbox or you know low performance storage when I was wanting to do big scale effects. Uh, I want to be able to have I want to be able to have highly performance storage on the other end and I want to be in control of it and I want to be able to not you know be paying through my teeth for it um, to have these sorts of abilities so what happens is I've got like four virtual drives that just sit there and I don't have to pay too much money for those um, when all my infrastructure is closed down those four virtual drives can just still sit there and not cost me too much money and then when I want to run everything I press go and I get my virtual NAS, those drives get hooked up to it and they're redundant. So, you know, you know we've got redundancy, they can fail. Uh, we can have drives fail and still be okay. And then that's automatically available, not just to my rendering resources in Amazon, but it's also available to me back home. Um, so there's, there's a lot of abilities that this gives us. It means that I can if I've got the internet, um, if I've got a really high bandwidth connection, uh, I can move that data back off the cloud to home and work with it from home. Um, or if I want to run my virtual workstation in the cloud from there, I can also spin that guy up and I can have my license server that just lives at home that can move licenses between here and the cloud. Um, Right now, licensing is like still a really difficult thing for me, but it's um, things are getting better. So, yeah, that's kind of like a quick breakdown of what I've been working on for the last nine months, and I haven't really been sharing um, much because I haven't really known what to do with it. Um, but I really want to make it open source, and you know, if I could somehow get to the point where I've got a thousand people contributing in the realm of twenty-five to fifty dollars. Um, every three months, which is not much, um, I could definitely do it and I'd really like to do it. Um, I think it's the benefits of having this type of infrastructure that I've been working on and making it open source. I think it's really important because if it's not open source, then there's going to be some form of vendor lock-in and I don't want that. Like. The whole purpose of this Terraform template is to eventually be completely cloud agnostic. Like I don't want to be locked in to either Google or AWS when I have to spin up my rendering resources. What I actually want is to just go with whoever's cheapest on the day or on the hour to, to get those renders done. And unless the solution's open source, I don't know how easy it is to make that work. Um, the other benefit of going open source with this is that it means that I can, I, can, I can change my storage solution, I can swap that out, I've got something that's a basis for a, a pipeline, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of the beginnings of what could be, you know, an open source rendering pipeline because, you know, that, those things don't really happen, we've never really had a reason to do that. Um, so really exciting stuff. and. Um, yeah, I'm just putting that up, that idea out there. I'd really like to be able to share this if I can make it work. And if I can build something that's open source and, and be able to share it and still be supported to do it, um, then the other benefits it offers is that I don't have to be um, careful about you know keeping IP to myself. You know, I can just put the ideas out there. So. You know, if this is something that you know you'd like to contribute to, or you'd be willing to contribute, um, you know, a small amount towards, um, on an ongoing basis, please let me know because I'd really, I really want to do it.